having our meeting on this um, July 9, 2013. Welcome, everyone. Let us stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please place your right hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And standing for the invocation, please. Let us all bow our heads, please. Lord, my God, you are holy and holy that you are. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart so that I can see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 hallelujah. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Lord my God, you are holy. Amen. 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 Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Rabbi Chief. Rabbi Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Great singer, Chief. <laughs> Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Vice Mayor Sterrell? Here. Councilman Galvin? Here. Mayor Tundro? Here. Councilman Bianame? Here. Councilwoman Keyes? Here. You have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Manager, are there any addition, deletion of the agenda? Good evening, Madam Mayor, Madam Vice Mayor, and Council. There are no changes to our agenda. Very good. So we do have our special presentation today. We are going to recognize uh, Wazdin Viterbo from uh, Emergency Management and um, uh, proclamation in honor of Parks and Recreation Month. I hope our um, director is here today. And of course, the Youth Opportunity Board presentation to Heather Holiday as the chairperson. And we are going to present checks of the winners and the runner ups in the Make Your City Green campaign. Oh. All right, so I'm asking council to join me, Vice Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Let's do this. Quick. Ladies first. Ladies first. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we have with, with us Ms. Rosalind Viterbo from the Emergency, the um, Miami-Dade County Department of Emergency Management. And she is She is the emergency manager coordinator who have been working for the city for 10 years. She is accompanied tonight by her director, Mr. Kurt Sumerov. Would you please come up to receive an order from the council? Rosalind, this year, every year, the city goes for emergency preparedness and we have a tabletop exercise. Rosalind took time and prepared our tabletop exercise for, that we have for three hours and that was attended by over 100 of our employees. She did it all herself with minimal feedback and that was the most extensive emergency management tabletop exercise that we had since we have been practicing that every year. Thank you, Rosalyn. City of North Miami recognizes Rosalyn Viterbo on this ninth day of July 2013 for your outstanding facilitation of the City of North Miami 2013 disaster mark exercise. You, your innovative and interactive training 
provided invaluable instruction and knowledge to the North Miami Emergency Response Team. Congratulations. I actually had a very, very good time, and it was amazing to see how committed the, the, the employees of, of North Miami are to the residents and, and students and businesses that, that are here. But I wanted to say, for as many as the accolades that Dr. Claude wanted to bestow on me, that I did not do this alone. It was definitely a, a, a partnership between us and North Miami. Uh, they provided valuable input, and that's what made the exercise such a success. Thank you all again. So I believe the month of July is the Parks and Recreation Month, and we do have a proclamation. July is Park and Recreation Month. We are fortunate to have a variety of recreation and park system, providing countless recreational opportunity for residents and visitors. And of course, you know, Mr. Gamer, I'm not gonna read the entire <laughs> proclamation. <laughs> Therefore, <laughs> In consideration of the foregoing, I, Lucie Tondreau, Mayor of the City of North Miami, on behalf of the City Council and residents, do hereby proclaim July 2013 to be Parks and Recreation Month in the City of North Miami and urge all residents to recognize and celebrate Parks and Recreation Month that serves as a significant gateway to family activities in our community. Therefore, Mr. Geimer, congratulations. All right. Um, I understand that we have winner up to make your city green campaign. Uh, Who? <laughs> she. Uh, you want the check, and she's the one giving it away. Is that correct? Come forward, please. <laughs> Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nancy Pierre Lewis. I'm with South Florida Community Services, a project of Florida Department of Transportation. We teamed up with the city of North Miami during the month of May to have a campaign, a campaign called Make Your City Green. And tonight I'm here to announce the three winners of the campaign. Of the, campaign. Uh, the first winner is Brittany Grace. Second winner is Helen Boyer. And the third winner is Shannon Halcomb. Hal I hope I pronounced that right. Um, I don't think any of the winners are here with us, so 
I will give the check to the city of North Miami Transportation Plan. John. I mean, you giving out money and they're not here? No, none of the letters are here. <laughs> Should you keep the money? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Congratulations. I, I, um, I really appreciate it. Um, as much as we can as a city to keep that campaign going, not only for one month, but throughout the year, it is important for us to keep a green city. And I believe in <coughs> environment, and each of us have our little grain of salt to put in order to help. Um, Vice Mayor? Um, is it, are we, I'm sorry, I didn't follow presentation of the youth checks of what? Ah, the Youth Opportunity Board presenting by Mrs. Holliday. Uh -huh. So now it's your turn. <laughs> that was a privilege to introduce you. If you don't mind, I'm going to turn the, the podium here so I can address everybody. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, Mayor and members of the Council. It is my great um, pleasure to come uh, a couple times a year and give some awards away to some uh, wonderful people in our community, um, mainly students but also some educators. So um, without further ado, there's are actually a, a couple of different types of awards. Um, so we're going to call them up and take photos and then we'll do the other types of awards. So the first one is the, uh, the Bill Carr Youth Recognition Awards. And these are basically awards that recognize students who live in North Miami um, or who attend North Miami schools um, at all levels from K-12 for their good citizenship. Um, and tonight they're going to receive an Office Max gift certificate um, and an award certificate from the Mayor and Council. And uh, our first winner is Isabel Augustin. Is she here? Augustin? From uh, Arch Creek Elementary School. Um, Ten-year-old Isabel is recognized by her principal for her enthusiasm for assisting her classmates uh, with their school assignments after finishing her own assignments. So congratulations, Isabel. <laughs> so, and then just hang out here. Congratulations. Yeah. There you go. Um, our second uh, honoree is Ruby Caceres. Is Ruby here? From, our, from North Miami, oh, excuse me, Arch Creek Middle School, elementary school? Pardon me. No, no, Ruby? Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Ruby. 17-year-old Ruby is recognized by her assistant principal for her fervor for charity, as evidenced by participating in more than 1,000 hours of community service um, at park clean parks cleanups, um, walks for autism, crime prevention activities, and serving meals to the homeless. So uh, we will get her her award. Our next honoree is Brittany Francois from North Miami Middle School. Is Brittany here? No, Brittany? 14-year-old Brittany is recognized by her assistant principal for her willingness to help students in need as characterized by her dedication uh, to helping one uh, student, one physically challenged student, um, by bringing him his lunch every day. So that's pretty special. Um, our next honoree is um, Marilia Mart Medina. Did I, get, did I get it right? Oh, yay. Uh, North Miami Elementary School. <laughs> Nine-year-old Morelia is recognized by her counselor for not only being a truly well-rounded student, but also for her heroism um, that she demonstrated when she jumped in the pool to save her little sister. Aww. Congratulations. Um, our next uh, honoree is Elaine Lowinger. Is Elaine here from David Lawrence K? 13-year-old Elaine is recognized by her teacher for not only her academic excellence, but also for her dedication to helping students and teachers by assisting in uh, a lower grade for one period each day at her school. Congratulations. Okay. And, and our last Bill Carr nominee is uh, Samantha Prophet from Natural Bridge Elementary School. Nine-year-old Samantha is recognized by her fourth grade teacher for her considerate and thoughtful attitude toward her peers, classroom, and school staff. Congratulations. Go to walk. Staging.
Um, our next group of awards uh, really honors the folks who are invo involved in the lives of students like the ones that uh, we just had a, have an op opportunity to recognize. Um, and that's our Educator Recognition Awards. And this is really a program that the Youth Opportunity Board established to recognize the educators in our community who share our vision for providing knowledge and opportunity and encouragement to the young people in, uh, in North Miami. Uh, and those uh, folks will also receive an Office Max gift certificate and uh, an award certificate from the City Council. And our first honoree is um, Diana Antoine from North Miami Middle School. Is Diana here? <laughs> Diana? Okay. Uh, teacher Diana Antoine is recognized by the school's assistant principal for her dedication to serving the school's faculty and students as a teacher leader, mentor to new teachers, and the department chairperson. She's also a recipient of Office Max's A Day Made Better Award. Our next honoree is Chantal Burton Evans. Is that correct? From Arch Creek Elementary School. Is Chantal here? Uh, reading coach Chantal Burton Evans is recognized by the school's principal for her uncompromising quest to provide quality educational opportunities for all students at the school. She demonstrates dedication and enthusiasm and that is contagious amongst her peers, making her an example of supportive leadership for all. Uh, our next honoree is Dr. Letitia English from William Jennings Bryan Elementary School. Uh -oh. <laughs> Fourth grade teacher and aftercare program manager Dr. Letitia English is recognized by the school's community clerk for her ability to unify educators, parents, students, and community leaders to work collaboratively toward the educational goals and social well-being of the young people at the school. Outside of the classroom, she also serves as the Vice President of the Afro-American Kiwanis Club and uh, of Miami and the Miami Mission Outreach President. Our next uh, educator that we're recognizing is Kadeen Gomez from Natural Bridge Elementary School. I know Kadeen's here. And Kindergarten teacher Kadeen Gomez is recognized by the school's principal for her positive attitude and innovative approach to teaching, which she's able to use to help students at all levels of ability succeed to their fullest potential. She spends countless uh, hours after school hours developing and delivering professional development to her colleagues, writing grants, and serving as a primary grade chair and participating in the ESAC. Congratulations. Our our next honoree is Ritzy Hossein from um, William Jennings Bryan Elementary. Is Ritzy here? Fifth grade, uh, fifth grade math science teacher Ritzy Hossein is recognized by a fellow teacher for her 23 years of service to William Jennings Bryan Elementary School. Um, during her tenure there, she has served as an ESAC member, grade level chair, y the YWCA assistant site director, safety patrol coordinator, mathematicians in training competition coordinator, uh, and has continued to improve her skills with a master's degree. Uh, although she has previously been recognized by the schools uh, as the school's Rookie Teacher of the Year, as well as Teacher of the Year, we hope our award demonstrates our community's appreciation for her as well. Um, next teacher is, I know she's here, Sa Sela Sarah Telefort, sorry, uh, from Alonzo Tracy Morning <laughs> Senior High School. Teacher Sarah Telefort is recognized by the school's assistant principal for her ability to work with both the most challenged readers as well as dual, dual enrollment students. She serves as a 10th grade class sponsor as well as a badminton coach. Congratulations. And our last teacher that we're recognizing tonight is, Re is Rebecca Valverde from North Miami Elementary School. Yay! Media specialist Rebecca Valverde is recognized by the school's principal for her instrumental role in the implementation and use of technology at the school, the school's website and weekly announcement bulletin, the gradebook management system, and the STAR and Accelerated Reader, reader programs. Her efforts ensure that the school community is efficient and successful. So congratulations to all educators. All right. Photo op. Shoulders and then the angle you guys. Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 
Okay. Okay, we're we're in the home stretch. Um, this next award is um, was established in 2008 um, through the efforts of one of our longtime YOB members and uh, community activists, well-known community activists, uh, Myrna Pavlak. Um, and we established the Bill Valentine Mentorship Award to recognize a student from the City of North Miami's mentor program um, for their progress and development over the year. Um, the student is chosen by the, the leader of the, the leadership of the mentor program, and they're honored with a name um, with their name on a plaque in uh, the City Hall um, foyer over here, and uh, an award that can be displayed at their home to remind them of their accomplishment. Uh, and this year's honoree is is uh, Haisha Sinsurin. Is Haisha here? Sinsurin? Uh, I don't think she's here, but she's being recognized for her improvements um, in both her interactions with others and her academic performance uh, improvement this year. She uh, was once an introverted girl, overwhelmed by all the new people, assignments, and expectations of middle school. And now she is described as a friendly young lady who puts forth maximum effort in school and maintains perfect attendance. So we want to congratulate her for her improvement this year, and, and we'll get her award to her. And our final awards are the, the big fun ones. Um, we um, have the great honor of being able to give um, a few students in our community um, some awards that they can use toward their college education. Um, as we all know, college is getting more expensive these days, so every little bit it helps. Um, so the Luship Scholarship Program uh, provides uh, cash scholarship awards for North Miami students who have maintained at least a 3.0 high school GPA, plan to attend college or university, uh, and have demonstrated uh, leadership and uh, academic excellence. Uh, the students that we honor tonight will receive a combined total of $1,400 in scholarships from the City of North Miami and the Youth Opportunity Board. And our first uh, winner is Jolene Cooper from Doctors Tartars, Doctors Tartar School. Pardon me. And Jolene is a, an aspiring educator. She wants to be a teacher uh, who has spent her high school career excelling in the most rigorous, rigor rigorous of curricula, including dual enrollment classes for college credit, while serving as the senior class treasurer and secretary of the National Honor Society. Uh, despite her hectic schedule, Jolene also found time um, to be in the Key Club and the Green Club, and has already begun her career in education by tutoring young students at the Montessori School of North Miami. So, congratulations. And um, our last honoree uh, for the Lushik Scholarship Program is uh, Saskia Jean-Jacques. Saskia? Hey. From Alonzo and Tracy Morning Senior High. Um, after the, the devastating uh, earthquake in Haiti, Saskia and her family relo relocated to North Miami. Um, and so she began to struggle with coming to a new community, learning a new language, um, and being in new classes. But she really adapted quickly um, her teachers say it, and uh, she learned English well enough to enroll in advanced placement classes. Um, she's in school clubs and activities and community service programs. She has a 3.8 GPA, and she has over a thousand hours community service. So, yeah. So, as you can imagine, her teachers describe her as resourceful and energetic, um, and a young leader who is always willing to assist staff and students, and she's well respected and liked among her teachers and peers alike, and she hopes to fulfill her promise by becoming a physician. So, congratulations.
sei se é City Events. Mr. City Manager, any City Events? Yes, ma Madam Mayor, I uh, invite uh, Pam Solomon to the podium to discuss uh, upcoming city events. Yes, good evening everyone. Pam Solomon, uh, Public Information Manager for the City of North Miami. It's a pleasure to be here to share with you a few of our upcoming activities for the remainder of the summer. Uh, we are launching the New Year's Summer Backpack and School Supply Drive. This has been a long-standing tradition here in the City of North Miami. And we will accept donations here on the second floor of North Miami City Hall through August 2nd of school supplies and um, new backpacks that we then package up and deliver out to the schools along with the mayor and city council the second week of school. And we work with all of our local schools in North Miami uh, to do that. And we also um, have our back to school health fair that we also distribute um, backpacks at that event in August. That will take place at the Joe Celestine Center Saturday, August 10th. And the information is on our website at northmiamifl.gov forward slash celebrate, where we always post our celebrations uh, for the upcoming month. At our back to school health fair, we will have health screenings, food and entertainment, and a variety of social service agencies there to uh, serve the community. Once again, that's at the Joe Celestine Center, Saturday, August 10th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Joe Celestine Center is located at 1525 Northwest 135th Street. For more information, you may contact our Parks and Recreation Department at 305-895-9840 to find out how you can uh, participate in this event. Also, we have the National Night Out events uh, through the Police Department. This is a national uh, venture, National Night Out Against Crime. It's the 30th year. Uh, that that is taking place and we always host events throughout the city this year there are two events taking place one at Johnson and Wales University um, and that will be from 6 to 9 p.m. Johnson and Wales is located at 1701 Northeast 127th Street and that is being coordinated by the North Miami Community Services section uh, the Police Department Community Services section you can contact them at 305 Eight nine one zero two nine four, and this is just basically an opportunity to come out, meet your neighbors, uh, meet the people that serve and protect you every day the, from the North Miami Police Department, and come out. Um, uh, it's a National Night Against Crime to have a family fun event in the streets, and at that event, uh, they have food, entertainment, and the homeowners organizations come together and put a variety of a program together. We also have one event at the Sunkist Grove Community Center as well that evening, and that's located on 125th Street and Northwest 13th Avenue. And that event will also be starting at 6 o'clock. More information will be posted on northmiamifl.gov forward slash celebrate as we continue to coordinate for our national night out events. Um, and just a quick announcement on behalf of our library and parks and recreation department we do have our summer programs that are still running throughout the duration of the summer so please um, come out to the North Miami Public Library located at 835 Northeast 132nd Street uh, we have a lot of summer reading programs and incentives that are ongoing through the beginning of August it's not too late to register and get your reading logs so you can turn them in they have wonderful prizes including a, a Kindle Fire and an iPad that they will be giving away uh, just for turning in your reading logs and participating in those programs. For more information on those programs from the library, log on to northmiamifl.gov forward slash NOMI library, that's N-O-M-I library. And uh, the Parks and Recreation Department continues to uh, operate our summer youth camps throughout the summer up until school starts. So if you uh, are looking for a summer camp opportunity, we have a few sessions available. You can reach out to the Parks and Recreation Department by dialing 305-895-9840. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we're gonna ask Dr. Claude. Any, any hurricane or tropical storm on the air? Dr. Claude. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, for hurricane preparedness, we have with us today Mr. Gérald Estupinan 
from the National Weather Service in Miami. Mm -hmm. He is the Science and Operation Officer. And for seven years, he works at the National Weather Service. And prior to that, he worked at uh, the Weather Channel. Mr. Estupinan, would you please let us know what we should expect for the season? All right. What I'm going to be going over today is the uh, 2013 uh, NOAA hurricane outlook. Every year, uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration puts together a hurricane outlook. And this hurricane outlook is a guide of what we could expect for the season. It doesn't mean that it's accurate for South Florida because every season is different and it doesn't have a forecast projection of the tracks of the storms. But it gives you an idea that if you have more storms, you have a higher probabil probability or chance that one of those storms could affect South Florida. That's the whole message of creating these hurricane outlooks. So um, what we are forecasting for this uh, year, uh, for the entire Atlantic Basin, for the six months season, which begins in June 1st and it goes all the way to the end of November, we're forecasting between 12 to 18 named storms, and these are both tropical storms and hurricanes all together. Out of those 12 and 18, between 6 and 10 could become hurricanes with winds of 74 miles per hour or greater. And then out of those 6 to 10 hurricanes, 3 to 6 could become major hurricanes, category 3, 4, or 5, with winds 111 miles per hour or higher. And uh, this is calculated statistically and scientifically using a lot of data. And each one of these ranges has a 70% likelihood and indicate that activity will exceed the seasonal average of 11 named storms. You know, there is always a climatological standard every year if you average all the years. So this year we're talking about that there is a 70% chance that we could be above climatological standards, if you can call it that. So that means that there is a high chance that these could be a very active season. And uh, the reason why this is expected to be an active season is specifically three main things, and I'm just going to concentrate on these things. You know, we are continuing an era of high activity that began in 1995, and this has to do with large-scale patterns, without getting into a lot of detail here, uh, that have to do with the uh, atmospheric conditions and oceanic conditions in the Atlantic Ocean since 1995. Then in addition to that, we have warm temperatures, the second bullet there, warm temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean. Sea surface temperatures where storms often develop and move across the Atlantic are up to two degrees Fahrenheit above normal or above average. So that's another factor that we're looking at. And then we have the fact that for this year, we do not have an, an El Nino. We have you know, neutral or La Nina conditions still present, a weak La Nina condition still present. But you know, this, what this does is that when you don't have El Nino, when you don't have a major forcing, allows for storms to develop and last longer in the Atlantic Basin. So all these three things are against us if we want to maintain the Atlantic quiet this year. Unfortunately, we're dealing with these events since 1995. But the one thing that I always want to mention that is very important, that this seasonal outlook does not predict where and when any of the storms may hit. You know, you could have a very active season, none of them may hit South Florida. So that's why I always say, Use this as a guide. Always be prepared. Always prepare for the worst because unfortunately science is not there for us to know if a storm is going to go through South Florida. And uh, for example, look at this image here. You know, what is the relevance of seasonal outlooks? You know, seasonal outlooks are not predictors of it. Uh, it doesn't tell us where the storms are going to go. And South Florida is vulnerable to tropical storm systems every year, regardless of the outlook. And this is what we see. So I just want to close by saying, unfortunately, we expect a, a very active season this year, 
but hopefully maybe South Florida doesn't get impacted. Statistically, we have not been impacted for actually several years from now, and that's also playing against us because the more that we are without being hit, the higher the chances are. So everybody be prepared. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Amazing. Do I have any question for her? Um, no, we don't. No, dude, after Andrew, we have that. No, it was Wilma. Wilma well, in was 2005, yeah. 2005. Since then, we have not had any uh, big hit. Exactly. And, and where is Chantal now? Chantal is located just south, southeast of Hispaniola, Haiti. Mm -hmm. And it's moving, actually, I was just reading the latest advisories. It's moving at 26 miles per hour. It's moving quickly. So it's going to hit uh, Haiti and the Dominican Republic uh, quicker than expected. And hopefully it will weaken it enough so the circulation, when it emerges on the other side, it doesn't f reform again. Mm -hmm. But if it does reform, which the National Hurricane Center is still predicting for it to reform in some sort of weak system and then start gaining strength, it could start impacting us as early as Friday, which we thought originally that it was going to be Saturday, but it all depends on if it is if it's able to maintain strength after it goes through the mountains. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh. Madam Mayor for Progress 2013, uh, I'd like to invite our Assistant Public Works Director, Mr. Kareth Fiddler. Good evening. First, I would like to uh, state that our uh, website have been, has been updated this week. Um, the new website address is northmiamifl.gov forward slash progress 2013. That was updated this week. Uh, you can get an update on all the projects, um, most of them which have been, um, that's in the process of being completed or have already been completed. One project I would like to highlight this evening is the 7th Avenue Commercial Facade Program which is a million dollar project and I would like to introduce one of the um, the contractors Mr. Joe Alvarez yes good evening my name is Joe Alvarez um, I'm one of the contractors in this specific is it me or I'm not hearing properly I would like for you to raise your voice all of you as okay. a matter of fact I don't know oh, if okay, there's okay, a problem with the mic okay I, um, first of all thank you for having me it's just a short notice and um, I really appreciate that. Um, this is one of the projects that I'm involved with in the 7th Avenue uh, facade improvement. Um, I think it's something that is going to change a regular shopping center to look like a mall uh, you know, entrance and it's just a facade what we're doing. Also we're incorporating some landscaping and new parking basically on this particular shopping center. Uh, so it's something that it would be I think very beneficial for the city and it would change completely this particular area. Uh, we're also working with the uh, city manager and uh, to it's in the pre-stages right now to see if we can, uh, they will uh, have a, a substation in this particular parking lot, I mean, shopping center, uh, police station. So, um, I mean, something that would be great for the area also. So we're willing to work with, with the city manager and, and the police department to see if we can have this uh, particular substation there. Um, as you can see, something a little bit different than the rest of the 7th Avenue improvements, and hopefully uh, this is something that will impact uh, greatly on the city, you know, for everyone. I'm sorry, where is that shopping center going to This be? is located at uh, 13715 to 13753 Northwest 7th Avenue. Uh, it actually starts with Pizza Hut in the corner and, and uh, we have uh, basically uh, we want to I mean do something different in this particular shopping center so hopefully uh, this will do a big change on that particular area thank you and, and mayor and council and vice mayor if I can just say um, this is in the planning uh, stage he's been working this particular complex has been working with staff uh, in building and zoning uh, uh, and the uh, director Maxine Callaway to facilitate this facade program uh, this is just 
one shopping center. Uh, so we wanted to, in this report tonight, in the update, is to show you uh, what is taking place uh, along the 7th Avenue corridor with the funds that were approved. And uh, what are we going to have? Uh, those are going to be rent retail stores? We're going to be renting? Or is it a shopping center that has one particular thing in it? Or is it the strip mall? This particular is a strip mall that's going to be renovated uh, with the facade uplift, uh, new parking, new landscaping, uh, new fascia front, as you see there. And this is what uh, uh, Vice Mayor Sterl had gotten approved through council on the 7th Avenue corridor. Mm -hmm. We feel that uh, this, is, this program will certainly spark um, a lot more or, or attract a lot more uh, different types of vendors to come in uh, to the corridor on that 7th Avenue mm -hmm. plan. Uh, so it's money well spent. We think that it will really revitalize 7th Avenue. It's been very attractive to the strip uh, mall owners or the strip store owners. Um, because 7th Avenue is a corridor that's picking back up a lot of traffic and the entire facade program uh, will really enhance uh, 7th Avenue uh, which has been a challenging area but now through these enhancements and, the, and this funding uh, we, we see some great opportunities also at this particular shopping center which is located just on 7th Avenue on the east side uh, of the uh, strip there, uh, just north of Opalaka Boulevard. Mm -hmm. um, the owner of this particular strip, um, we are in conversations with her to provide, uh, to have a uh, police substation. Once we get those details work out, of course, we will come back before council for final approval. Anyone else, any questions? Thank you. Your name again, sir? Joe Alvarez. Joe Alvarez. Mr. Alvarez, what is your relation to this project? Well, I'm, I'm going to be probably the project manager in this particular project, and also I'm going to be handling the construction part of it. Um, I'm representing the owner, but she couldn't come today because she has her mom ill. So, uh, who, who, who is the owner? Uh, they are Philip and Norma Glogover. Glogover. I'm sorry. Philip and Norma Glogover. How do you spell that last name? G L O G O G is in, in girl. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. L O G O V is in Victor E R. That's the last name. It's a very unique name. Yeah. Um, he's by the way, he's a doctor, and she's the one who's handling basically the the um, the shopping center strip. Gotcha. Now I, I I work about a block south of the facility. So the yeah, facility I know. Facility. I see. Yeah. Um, I, a question for staff. Do we have an application process for this, these 7th Avenue rehab funds? Yes. That was presented to council once this item was approved. Uh, we presented the application process, how one would go about um, submitting that application. We contacted, um, we had a meeting with several of the owners. We, we found that um, the owners of those strip malls, uh, a lot, uh, one owner may own multiple areas along from 119th Street up to 143rd. We had uh, a meeting with all of them collectively. We rolled out the program, what the program was about, what the spirit of the uh, program was. We presented them the uh, facade program or the fascia um, uh, what it would should look like based upon the consultants that appeared before council. Uh, we gave that to them um, and we involved our um, Dan Lima uh, and, and Leslie Pradhan uh, to gather these business owners together to work collectively and uh, it, it was very well accepted and uh, this is just one of the products of it so because they were here today with the city uh, and they had presented this drawing with the plans. Uh, we invited them to come tonight. Is it still a 50-50 match? I believe so, yes. It's a 50-50 match. I think it's up to $80,000 uh, per project. 
Uh, we tried to spread it out enough. We identified the uh, areas that would um, have the greatest impact uh, of a facial uplift, uh, that being between 125th uh, all the way up to um, uh, the city's northern border. There may be one <coughs> shopping center south of that that we looked at as well. But again, one uh, particular individual owns three, another one owns two. Uh, this one uh, particular owner just owned this one shopping center. But we, again, brought them all together so we can get the greatest uh, bang for the buck. And there are still applicants to come. This is not the one and only. This is not anything out of the ordinary special. We're, we're approving them tonight and nobody else. Uh, no, absolutely. Uh, all of the owners have been approached. All of the owners are participating. Um, we have, uh, and they are starting to bring in their plans uh, because this particular owner was here uh, a few hours ago uh, I had an opportunity to walk in on the meeting and saw the plans. I thought it would be befitting to bring him here tonight to show so you can have an idea of, of how great this program is going to be. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, Madam Mayor, if you allow me, I just want to congratulate staff. Uh, we have been working extremely hard uh, with this project. A couple of years ago, when we actually had money with the CRA, it was very hard to even have the owners of the building participating because that um, some of them don't live in the city of North Miami. Actually, they don't even live in Florida. So it was hard to get in contact. It, we, we were only able to contact the tenants, which cannot do anything. But this year, it was kind of, it was great to see that because staff spent so much time and phone calls, we're able to make sure that we have about, what, nine um, buildings or strip mall that's willing to participate. So again, I think it's a, it's a good thing. And another concern that I had while we were um, strategize around this project, a lot of time the money that the city has when we, we do spot project, usually we don't show at the end of the day uh, it doesn't show the work that we actually doing and where the money goes. But this time, staff were able to actually have the project not only on Seventh Avenue, but we were able to have different strip, you know, nearby enough. When you go in the Seventh Avenue corridor, you will actually see the the impact made. So once again, City Manager, thank you so much for putting the time and the effort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Fetter, if you can continue with the uh, 2013 report on the other items. Yes. A um, few of the uh, items, I'm going to mention some of the projects that, that have been completed. Uh, our, 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 my first phase of our city sidewalk repairs have all been done. Um, we also, we've completed the, uh, the Enchanted um, Park and Pony Ride, um, the stable, the roof replacement. Um, also, basically, uh, we've also, uh, we, we're, we're in the process of uh, the permitting process for the 142nd um, North Street alley wall. Um, so that should be starting pretty soon. Um, the rest of the projects, as I mentioned, um, can be, uh, you can get information on them on our website at NorthMiamiFL.gov forward slash progress 2013, which has been updated this week. I, I, Madam Mayor, if you allow me. Go ahead. I have a question. Is what happened to Pioneer Boulevard um, project? Is it finished? No, we're, we're currently in the process of uh, energizing the fountain. We've okay. been um, in contact with FPL, um, where the point of connection was originally told to us by FPL. They've changed it, so we're in court. We're um, in corresponding with our new project manager from FPL to, um, to get the power to the fountain. And what is the frame time to have this accomplished? Um, well, with usually they said it, it should take a couple of weeks to a month to get it energized, but the project is uh, pretty much like 80% done pending the power. Yeah. Is it the same project for FPL to put electricity in those streets that have no lights at all? Uh, no, different project. Different project. Yes, different project. Thank you. Any other no questions? No. No? Okay. okay. Thank you. All right.
Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Now, um, progress of date now. Can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Madam Chair, I would like to have items B, E, G, H, I, J, K, L, Can you go M slower? Hello, 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 hello. Oh. Let's go back. Okay. <laughs> I'd like the following items to be removed from the consent agenda um, to be put on the regular agenda. I know there's a lot, but each item, I believe, uh, deserves public discussion or amendments or public input. Those would be B, E, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, and Q. <coughs> is that a motion? I don't think a motion is necessary. What is it, Madam Mayor? She wants to do some. Madam Attorney, okay, here. Yes. Here I'm there sorry. There's no motion necessary. We just move into the next agenda. I mean, I believe there is a motion required um, and seconded, and the majority will. Okay, under Robert's rules, it says no motion. A vote is necessary, but um, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second the motion. Madam Mayor, if you allow me, Discussion. I um I don't have a discussion about remove the um, the item out of the consent agenda but if you allow me I do have question of about one item I don't mind you keep it in the consent agenda but I have questions on some of the items sure go ahead so how do you want to proceed doing no, that do you want to we need to vote on it and then we can go ahead and continue to your um um suggestion okay let me ask if you allow me may I ask the mm -hmm. city attorney Madam City Attorney, if this item, the the motion doesn't pass, uh, can we still go back and ask questions? Unless you want to have a, a friendly amendment to the motion um, that is already on the floor. Oh, sure. Madam City Attorney, is that correct? I think there were two different questions. So your question, I believe, was whether if the motion is passed, whether you can have a discussion on those items is that correct yes uh, yes because they will be put on the regular agenda no, and no, no, no. what I'm s oh well no I said if it, if it doesn't pass if the if we if you can still pass, have a discussion still have a discussion. you can still have a discussion okay. oh, and okay. yes the, the motion can be amended as well okay so I'll have um, a friendly amendment to the the motion to discuss some of the items or all of the items if Madam uh, Kalki wants questions Madam Vice Mayor, that would make the keeping the records confusing. Right now, we have a motion to remove B, confusing. E. Madam, right. confusing to whom? To you or no, to me? No, to the record, to us. Because what's going to happen is you're going to add an additional amendment to a motion to remove those items off the consent agenda and put it. My advice would be to vote on that motion first, and then you can always discuss whether or not you want to individualize a particular item. But what the motions on the floor right now is to remove items off the consent agenda and put it in the regular agenda. So that's the motion. Now, if you want to make an amendment to discuss an item, um, that, that motion is going to pass, and we're going to have all those items on the regular agenda. Okay, M Mr. Clerk, mm -hmm. I understand what you're trying to say, but what I'm saying is that I think the, the, the spirit of moving the item out of the consent agenda mm -hmm. is to discuss it. What I'm saying, instead of we move it totally from the consent agenda and discuss each one of them and vote on it, instead of doing that, I'm adding, uh, I'm doing a friendly amendment. Instead of we move everything, can we still discuss it? That's I don't know if you're confused, but I'm not. No, that's I a different mo that's a different amendment because what the, that, that's what I'm telling you. What you want to amend is something completely different than what the councilwoman requested. She wants it off so that she can, so that we can have the first um, so that we can read it and discuss it. 
the, my advice, because we have to keep a clean record, Madam Vice Mayor, is to vote on that motion and you come up with your own amendment, I mean your own motion saying that can we at least discuss this. So that's what you would like to do if you are up here? No, that's what I would have to do. I would prefer as the record keeper, because we have to keep clean records. And so that would, it's up to you obviously, okay. but my advice would be, Madam mm -hmm. Vice Mayor, mm -hmm. is to vote on the current motion that is on the floor, okay. and then you would have authorization to make whatever motion you would like to make. That's my recommendation. Thank you your so call. much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Madam City Attorney, uh, if I made a friendly am amendment um, to the motion, would that be confusing to the record? Or however that uh, I'm supposed to go, I'll, I'll take I, I understand your motion to amend her, your yeah. amendment to amend her motion to rather have the items be placed on the regular agenda just to be simply discussed. Because I, I agree that there are items that need to be discussed. So, then they should. That's point of so clarification, so Madam Mayor. It's e there are eleven item yeah. that um, Mrs. Keys has to be removed from the consent agenda to be discussed on a one-to-one -one basis. And if I understand Vice Mayor properly, is that there are some uh, some item that needs to be discussed instead of asking to remove it from the consent agenda for us to discuss it prior. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, let's just discuss it within the consent agenda. But we need to be, instead of just voting the entire consent agenda without discussing it, so can we actually discuss each one of those items, which I agree to do, so instead of just remove them? And if, if uh, Ms. Keys does not accept the friendly amendment, as we usually do, I'll agree with that. But I don't understand what's confusing. That's what we always do with all the items. Whenever that we have a motion, we ask for a friendly amendment. The maker of the motion says no or yes, and then we'll move on. Simple as that. Mr. Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Point of clarification. If, if a member of the public, a, a lot of these things that are on the consent agenda tonight are substantive annexation, charter schools, and I have uh, so many questions about charter schools and how we handle that going forward. But there also might be members of the public who want to ask questions. And we have a new Bill of Rights that protects the citizens' ability to ask questions about things on this charter. If we keep things on the consent agenda under the Councilwoman's Friendly Amendment, and ask questions amongst ourselves. Will we also open up questioning to the public? That depends on the mayor's prerogative. Why not? Because if we take them off the consent and put them on regular, we open it up for public discussion, which I think is appropriate. I mean, there's a lot of serious things here tonight. But if we keep it on consent agenda, I'd like us to open it up to public questioning as well, because we almost have to under our, our citizens bill of rights which is now in our charter and I, I forget which part it was about right to be heard but it was pretty clear that citizens have the right to ask questions uh, so I think we mentioned this last meeting and the bill of rights has always been in your charter and the public does have a right to be heard there is citizens forum well I, I would so differ I would no. differ with you and I don't want to get into an argument I mean I, if we vote on something and it's over and people come up under citizens forum to me that's vastly different than being able to question and express their opinion. Okay, no, 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 okay. now, now, we, why don't we first agree on these 11 items that Mrs. Keys um, asked to be removed from the consent agenda, how are we going to proceed? Whatever is going to be discussed, the public, of course, have the right to speak. Um, they know about the two minute things, right? Yeah. On it, and uh, of course, we need to finish, let's finish this part and then we'll go to the second, second level. Mrs. Keys, um, Vice Mayor um, Steril, have made a, a friendly amendment to your motion. We can um, always I'm, I'm sorry I can't accept that. Our consent to gender reads that these are self-explanatory and are not expected to require additional <coughs> review or discussion. Right away, that should take it off. If there is discussion, that should take it off. Robert's Rules of Order describes a consent agenda as a way of disposing non-controversial issues without a discussion. If after we discuss it, the intent is everything that we just discussed is voted yes. And I can't say that everything on this, I on this agenda is going to be a yes. Okay, so to you there are some controversial so items that you would like to set aside in order for them to be discussed one by one. Uh, we're talking about 11 items. Yes, I mean some may be discussed 
and dispersed um, quickly. Some have, I mean, we have seven annexation items that can go very quickly. Okay. Uh, Vice Mayor, would you like to remove your friendly amendment motion? Which one? To uh, Mrs. Um, Key's mm -hmm. amendment. Madam Mayor, I never said that we cannot discuss or allow the public to speak on the item. I never said that. I think once uh, uh, once we open it, you as the chairwoman call the item um, up, we allow us to discuss or you that's your choice to allow the public to discuss it and then we keep it in the consent agenda Then we put it later on from if we understand what we wanted. Mine, mine I, I really don't have a problem with whichever ways that council decided to go. But my only concern is that I spent a lot of time meeting with staff, dealing with the agenda. And it's, it, when I have questions, I sit here, I call staff, I sit in meetings, I meet with my constituent, I come here to take care of the business. But when council refuse to meet with staff or don't want to take the time that I took to, to deal with the agenda and we want to come here and do the parade and the show up here, it kind of bothers me. Yeah. But I really don't mind that if we pull out an item and allow people, the constituent, to deal with it, I don't mind that. Okay. But creating the charade, that's the part that I'm not about to take to, to do here tonight. Okay, so Councilwoman Keys have a, a, a motion on the floor that was seconded by Mr. Galvin. Um, can we do roll call, Mr. Galvin? Absolutely, Kirk? Mayor. Vice Mayor Stein? No. Mayor Thundro? No. Councilman Galvin? Yes. Councilman Bienname? No. Councilwoman um, Keys? Yes. Measure fails 3-2. Now, Madam Madam Vice Mayor, do yes. you have yeah. a motion? Uh, I don't have a motion, but I would like to proceed um, according to the mayor's uh, chair. Uh, I would like to proceed with the, the the meetings. However, I do have questions with uh, f um, on a couple of items. Okay. Um, no, I do. I have what is it? The, do have I have to take it by, uh, one by one, or whichever one that I have questions on? You can, it's she up to the mayor, right. however she, she wants to proceed. That she would like to address on a one-by-one one basis, and uh, I think she should go ahead and we, we discuss it. Sure. Thank S you, Madam Mayor. I do have a question of um, item U, Mr. City Manager, if I can find it. Um, I think it's a division program. Um, Madam, Madam Diver Vice Mayor, the, um, I, I don't think that's a part of the program. consent agenda. What is it? It's not Tab. part of the consent agenda. Okay. Yeah, um, um, consent agenda only goes I, to I Tab. I agree. Right? I, 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 I take it. I'm sorry. I'm okay. Sorry. Um, okay. I do have question on, not question, just point of clarification, um, Madam City, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, tab B, which is talking about the school board. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there's, there, there are a lot of people that's talking about it. I just want uh, um, an update or a couple of clarification from the city manager before we move on. Sure. Um, I thought it'd be fitting that I uh, presented um, Mayor and Council a copy of what was sent to me uh, this afternoon, uh, late this afternoon at 501 from uh, the Intergovernmental Affairs Office of the School Board from uh, Arada Mendez Cartaya. Um, she had contacted me and indicated that we were in violation of the interlocal agreement uh, with the school board um, as it pertains to having a charter school. Um, my discussion was with her was that I felt like that the school board is also in violation of that charter or in violation of that agreement due to the fact that in uh, some years ago um, the city gave two large parcels of land at Biscayne Landing being David Lawrence and Alonzo Tracy Morning for the purposes of when we build that our residents at Biscayne Landing are known today as Alita would be able to have a school to go to. 
Uh, the school district has redesigned their lines uh, and we have found that uh, about 20% of North Miami residents attend Alonzo Tracy Morning and David Lawrence. Therefore, really? yes, and therefore it violates uh, the agreement. So, can, it's can a, you restate that please? I didn't follow. Yes, the spirit of the agreement, the reason why the city gave... I, I was here, I mean, I, okay. did, I didn't die. So what was the, you just said though that's in violation? Uh, only 20% of our residents attend both of those schools, K through eight and nine through 12. So here we are in the midst of building and we did not, we got school concurrency, but basically what they're saying, anybody that is, any future residents at Biscayne Landing, the 184 acres would be shipped to another school. They would not attend K through eight or Alonzo Tracy Morning. That is in violation of the agreement. So taking the two schools together, their cumulative student body, only 20% comes from North Miami? That's correct. What did you base that on? Uh, based upon their data. We asked them for the data. We asked them for a, an attendance census. Um, and we're, that's what we based it upon. And that was provided to you by the principal of each school? You no, I, I don't know the source. It came from the school board. The school board. The school told us? board. Correct. Okay. How come? I'd love to continue this because I've got. I'd love to ask questions. It's all. Uh, I, you know what? Go on. Go on. So Go therefore, on. <laughs> uh, when we presented the conceptual plan, this is why we had to come up with land on the Biscayne Landing site to provide a school, and you and uh, you all have seen that that there is a parcel outlined for a school. That is absurd, in my opinion, that we have to provide land on the 184 acres when this city gave away two large parcels for the purpose of that construction. So it is of my opinion that the school board is in violation of, the, of their own agreement. Why didn't you tell us this before right um, now? I, mean, I don't Mr. understand uh, why. I, I Mr. Galvin, Mr. Galvin. Can can we, I don't get can up, we, I don't understand. Can, why don't, don't you just understand. take notes from what the uh, city manager is oh no, taking, I, Councilwoman, my notes are Vice Mayor my notes are right still have here. the floor, uh, Vice but Mayor still have the floor, Mr. Galvin, he's telling us this why don't now? you just take notes and then when he's done, you can come up with your questions once Vice okay. Mayor finishes. Sure. Thank I, you. I, I would have to say, uh, Madam Mayor, I have raised this issue okay. uh, before on the conceptual plan. I, I have raised it in council it, this Can body? you continue, continue this with your presentation and then we are taking notes. So. So basically, uh, my conversation with the school board is this. They, they had prese presented uh, Section 13 that says, uh, and I highlight it there and I'll read it, the city covenant agrees that during the term of the ground leases, uh, as say may be extended, the city shall not seek, approve, or accept any charter school within the city that would compete our charter school is not competing with North Miami Senior. It's not, and at Biscayne Landing High School, that's with that BL, we're not competing with them. It's of their opinion that we are because they don't know our application. They haven't reviewed our application because we have not submitted the application. Mm -hmm. So for them to uh, feel that we're in violation of something that they have not even reviewed is wrong. So we're not in violation of Section 13. However, we did have friendly enough discussion that I raised the concern on behalf of the city as to why is it that uh, two schools are overcrowded. That was discussed in this body that we have Alonzo Tracy Morning and David Lawrence that is already overcrowded, overpopulated, and the attendees are coming from Golden Beach, Sunny Isles, Aventure, uh, Bell Harbor, Bay Harbor, and Miami Shores. Mm -hmm. And this is our land. It was intended to, to uh, facilitate residents when that site got built. So um, what has happened here that the school board is saying, uh, in my opinion, is we, we both could be in violation and we agreed to sit down with each other. So therefore, 
On this agreement tonight, uh, on this issue tonight, I'm recommending that we proceed with the application process. We can sit down with the school board and iron out uh, what they describe as a violation and what I know to be a violation. I know that this city did not give away two large parcels of land for people in other cities to attend and now it's overcrowded. So therefore, as it has already always been brought up to this body, to the Planning Commission and here, that whenever we build, those residents have to be shipped to another school. And that's not why this city gave away two parcels of land. So therefore, they need to become, uh, become compliant to that lease, and we have agreed to sit down mm -hmm. and to iron this stuff out. Gotcha. So therefore, the application should move forward. We should use it as leverage, and we could resolve this at a later date. But this, we're, we're not in violation. The issue is, are we competing? And we're not competing with North Miami Senior, or David Lawrence, or Alonzo Tracy Morning. This is a different type of a curriculum that has nothing to do with the traditional schools that will compete uh, as a traditional charter would with the public school. Vice Mayor, any question? Mr. No. Genemy? If I understand, uh, we already approved the consent no. agenda, meaning uh, this item already passed, right? No. no, we have not approved the consent agenda yet. Oh, oh, we have, oh okay, 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 okay. We vote on the motion. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Galvin. Thank you. My opinion would be that those two schools, Alonzo Morning and David Lawrence, not be allowed to open in the fall if they don't rectify immediately. If they're sending that many of our kids elsewhere, thanks, thanks for the giggle, Jim. I'm saying this in absolute seriousness. Jim, we've known each other for 25 years. That's, a, that's an outburst that I find disrespectful and disappointing. If we have an agreement with the Day County Public School System and they're not adhering to it, shame on them. Shame on our school board member, Martin Karp. Shame on the people who are not allowing our students to go to our schools that we provided land for. What the councilwoman's looking to do with her charter school, actually in theory, I, I, I actually support. Not, I'm not a big, being a former Day County Public School teacher, I'm not a big charter school guy. But North Miami students should be allowed to go to North Miami schools, especially when we're providing the land for them. Personally, I don't know what the rest of the council feels, but I would be as hard-nosed as possible over the summer, if need be, calling emergency and special meetings of this city council. If indeed 80% of the students at those two schools are not coming from within North Miami's boundaries, take our land back. Uh, through the through the mayor councilman um, my conversation today the they did give me an avenue to for the city to appear before and that is a special meeting that they have annually to address the how they district the lines of who attends those um, I was never aware of how that worked uh, but I am now I was educated today by the school board into uh, intergovernmental office. Oh, uh, I and staff will be attending those meetings and will be sending us the dates. Um, one of the things that we're going to try to do is to get those boundaries moved uh, instead of being eastward as they are, to come a little bit back westward um, to, to so that they will <coughs> impact our students greater. I will say that my conversations with the school board is that they had a problem. Um, uh, in fairness to the school board, they had a problem. Uh, they had a, a, a issue with Aventura and Sunny Isles. They had no place to send those students. David Lawrence and Alonzo Tracy Warning was the answer that they decided. However, uh, through the bond that was pa just passed, Aventura is getting a new high school. Sunny Owls is getting funding to add on to an existing school that is just about completed that will have a possible reduction um, this year as that's, that um, project has been completed. What we envision is when we go to those meetings 
is to try to orchestrate the lines being moved westward as construction goes forth to work in a collaborative effort with the school board so that uh, to give them time, hopefully the time that they build the Aventura School, hopefully the vertical building on the residential, it will kind of coexist so we can work together so that the lines move westward at the timing that the new high school in Aventura is built. So it may resolve itself and we will work with the school board. We've had a, a very good working relationship with them, but on this issue, uh, again, when they threw it in our lap, we had to throw that issue back in their lap that we came into the knowledge of as a result of going through the conceptual plan approval. We're just going to need to be more diligent because five, six years ago when we signed this interlocal agreement, they told us without a doubt that all students Northwest 17th Avenue and East would all go to North Miami Senior High School. And what the councilwoman's telling me is they've already reneged on that. So if they've reneged on that, and they've reneged on what they pledged to do at these two schools on the Biscayne Landing property. Councilwoman, you have my vote tonight for your charter school. Thank you, and, and, and I, and I want to tell you that I cannot, if this is all true, I cannot be more disappointed in the faith that I've placed in the Dade County Public School System to do right by the city of North Miami when we gave, gave them our land for 200 years. Shame on you, school board. Any other item for discussion that you would may like I, to discuss? May I this thing? Mrs. Discuss this item or do I? Sure, go ahead. Um, again, I'd like to reiterate, this is not a consent agenda item. This is discussion. It should have been open to the public. I guess we're going to open it to the public. Um, I have questions on it. Uh, you have a team that was put together, I believe. Did you spend $15,000 on a consultant to help us do this? Uh, we spent twenty thousand. We spent twenty thousand. I thought we approved fifteen. Uh, it's it's in the um, it's on our website that we I think that we spent fifteen thousand for this. Um, we got council approval to move forward with um, also to hire a consultant. I thought it was Init fifteen thousand. In initially, it was fifteen thousand. The approval was not for any particular amount, but the there was additional work um, that had to be done. So once the study was done, then we come to the application process and through facilitating the entire document, the collection of data, um, uh, which the consultant did. Staff could not do that. This, this report, I know that we need, I am totally in agreement that we do need a school on the west part of the city. but. No report was really given except some uh, very vague report this afternoon. And there's really no explanation to the public as who's running this, how much land are we giving away, how much park land are we giving away. We are in serious, um, we have a serious shortage of park land in our city. So nowhere does it say how much park land are we giving and are we allowed per the Dade County Ordinance to give park land away are we giving it away to a private school? And Mr. Galvin, you might be upset with the school board, but was there any undertaking to discuss uh, with the school board putting a regular school? Because it's, you've got a charter school, and a lot of people out there think that their children may be allowed to go there, but the boundaries are different. The criteria for admittance for children are different. And for those children in our city that have special needs, from what I've understood, stand and I didn't really have enough time to do the research on this will not be allowed to go to this school and I'd like to know who's running this school we've got a private have you already picked the people that are running this have we done an RFP for this I, I don't think there's enough information to just give me this and say this is a definite yes are this we there yet? Madame, Madame. are we to the point where we have to do RFPs and and, and what councilwoman is proposing I don't know what they've done so far because there really is no discussion it's just we're submitting a school. We don't. Vice mayor, you've you've done a report. You've spent twenty thousand dollars, and I have no. I see nothing for our twenty thousand dollars. Vice mayor, all I see is let's propose a charter school. Thank you, vice mayor. Um, Madam Mayor.